Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Eve Prosper Market Show. I'm your host, Locke Fox, and I, I'm here with market news despite uh, Fallout 4. Don't worry, guys. I haven't caught Fallout Fever, uh, but wait until Just Cause comes out because no promises there. So uh, to get started, if we can uh, just get into the meat of the show, let's talk real quick about some behind the scenes. If you want to tune into the show, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. Uh, we're live on Twitch and YouTube at 0300s on Friday. Um, I want to put a big thank you out to the YouTube crowd, which have just pushed us over 1,500 subscribers this week, which is a huge milestone. Um, I'm really glad to see everybody here. Um, I, I really were like 2x what I expected to be at. So um, I'm really glad you guys enjoy the show. Uh, we're almost to 500 on Twitter. I'd be really happy if we got the Twitter feed up to 500 subscribers. Um, and we have 250 people in the Slack channel, which, uh, information will be down below on how to join that. So thanks everyone to, who joins up, who, who joins and watches the show. It really does mean a lot. And, uh, I do appreciate, uh, I do appreciate everybody who tunes in. Um, also just a couple little business things. Uh, one, there is a survey out on the blog and will be attached down in the notes below. Uh, we're asking your questions on monetization, uh, with YouTube red. Do we want to turn on ads? Do we not want to turn on ads? There's also some questions about the future of the show in there. So get your responses in there. I'll be publishing the results probably in two weeks. Also, if you guys aren't subscribed on YouTube, make sure to go check it out. We had a uh, our first Market Maker interview with Delone Wolf. He was gracious enough to uh, come on and be our first, and uh, he was a real dream to, to chat with. It was a really great interview. So um, that went up on Monday, so make sure you're subscribed to go check that out. We have plans to get one done for the net, not coming out next week, but the following week. Um, and I'm still taking suggestions on people who know of people or are professionals in the uh, industrial and uh, market ways. So send them my way. Um, and then last, just to reiterate before we get into the main show, uh, the time in game has changed, but uh, here in the U.S. it has not. Uh, we're still at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. It's just that now the U.S. is back on God's time. So uh, that's 0300 in-game, same Friday time. We should be uh, staying regular on that time, but do expect to miss a couple of shows during the holiday season. We definitely will not have a Thanksgiving show here in the U.S., um, and there might be one or two shows we miss in December due to uh, conflicts. So just keep an eye on that. Again, keep subscribed to Twitter and YouTube and everywhere, and it will be it will be published if there's any show cancellations. Moving on, let's move into the news very quickly. Um, it's been a very quiet week in the news. Um, not a lot to talk about. The Amar Championships are still running. The matches this weekend will decide who is going to Iceland and who is getting Silver Magnates, so you're going to want to tune into that. I know that actually uh, some of the, the Silver Magnates have already been decided, I believe. The big news that came out today uh, were leaks about the new Destroyers. Uh, they teased them at uh, the live events over the fall, and we're finally getting to see some art. Uh, we have the Minmatar Bifrost, which has almost no uh, contrast, so he's really hard to make out. Uh, the Galente Magus, or Magus, I'm not sure what they're going to want to pronounce that as. The Amar Pontifex and the Kaldari Stork. These are supposed to be Fleet Command Battlecruisers, is what uh, Reddit was saying, but Fozzie is counter-trolling, saying uh, nothing's final until it's final. Don't just read what the uh, what CC tells you. So uh, careful there, guys. Um, and that's basically the biggest news so far. Um, we'll keep an eye on these destroyers as more information comes out, because there may be some uh, industrial opportunities coming up. With that, we're going to bust straight into Plex. And uh, I'm going to highlight here at the very end of the week a trend we're going to see on everything where the volumes are down like 20%. Um, I'm calling this the fallout effect. And uh, yeah, this is this is going to be seen everywhere. We've seen 
Plex stay very stable at 1.2. It's climbing ever so slightly, but uh, over the last two weeks, it's still basically flat. So uh, we'll give it another week. I also expect there to be a Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. So um, I would avoid buying into Plex uh, for the time being, if you can avoid it. Um, we should, if you can go the next three weeks without having to buy a Plex, I think you'll be handsomely rewarded come uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where the price will be, but it should be at least 10% off. And if we look at the one-year one view, again, uh, we're seeing basically staying flat since the last month, um, just keeping quiet. Again, we see the uh, much lowered uh, volumes. Uh, again, the fallout effect, which, if I, if I may be so obnoxious. Um, Volumes are down. I don't, I think it's down on both sides, so I wouldn't really say that we're going to go one way or the other. I just think we're going to stay flat. The RMT token markets, again, we're seeing stability. Um, the multiple pilot training certificate has been trending slightly upwards, which is a little interesting. Um, we'll see if that, if that heat continues. Uh, I actually expect it to uh, draw out and narrow up until Thanksgiving and then follow Plex wherever Plex goes. And then if we look at the buy and sell margins, again, things are actually pretty wide and stable, which is uh, unusual for Plex lately. So um, again, if you can if you can get on buy orders, the buy orders are, are pretty generous at the moment. We're going to see very, very slightly upward pressure into uh, Thanksgiving holiday here in the States. And then uh, I expect it to drop 10 or 15 percent. Uh, Excuse me, that's actually probably terrible. Um, at least five percent over the uh, over the Cyber Monday, Black Friday weekend. And then if we look at the Plex predictions, I put I published on the blog uh, again that I have fudged back into a different time zero, as I've been saying for the last two weeks. We're staying right inside the bounds uh, of the prediction. Um, again, this everything's acting as I would expect it. We're actually a little bit below where I'd like to be. Um, I do expect it to follow that green line uh, down the middle uh, rather closely, but uh, we may see it dip all the way down to the 1.1 uh, mark for the, uh, for the Cyber Monday deal. So again, just keep a close eye on it. Don't buy Plex right now because uh, it's going to be a local maximum. Moving on to minerals, uh, they have been, minerals are a little bit weird this week. Uh, titanium continues to go up slightly. Uh, we're back up above 6.2 at about 6.3. Uh, again, I don't want to say so much as that we are on a rate to 6.4. It's a little hard to predict with the uh, lowered volumes at the moment. But as we can see for the last two weekends, we've seen very healthy uh very healthy business going on in the Tritanium market, uh, keeping relatively balanced between buyers and sellers. So the there may have been some stockpiling going on, basic uh, trading from one side to the other. I don't think there's a whole ton of speculation going on at the moment. I just expect that this is industrialists driving the market in a stable state. Pyrite continues its slow slide, even though right now it's pretty stable at just under 11.4. Uh, again, I would expect this to slide down towards 11.2. I said this last week, I still expect it to be a little bit on the weak side, uh, especially with the, the lowered volumes. I kind of expect the miners to uh, push the prices down to sub 11.2, uh, but I don't know if they can keep it down that low in the, in the interim. Mexilon has been our baby for the last month, and it, it again continues to slide ever so slowly. Uh, we're at about 60, uh, excuse me, we're at about 63 at the moment. And uh, again, we're still seeing that downward pressure. Uh, looks like we may have overstated the, uh, the, the 70 may have been overstated because of expectations to get into citadels. Uh, expecting closer to a 50-50 split rather than the 70-30 split that was actually published. 
and uh, prices continue to slide down, but they look pretty stable at the 63 point. Uh, if you're looking, if you're thinking that the news around faxes and capitals coming out in the spring is good, this may be a decent chance to buy in again, uh, especially if you can get a buy order down in the 60 range. I would look to stockpile a little bit, a little bit of this on the side, uh, maybe build some stockpiles as you can get it under, under 60. Once the fax roll is really published, uh, that the stats are published and the transmutation information is going to be published, that is when I would want to jump in on this. And that's when I'd expect that the market would respond, bouncing maybe all the way back up to 70. Again, it's going to be hard to pinpoint that specifically without details. I am shooting a little bit blind. But again, if you can get Mexilon sub 60, I think that's a pretty good price to hold on to. Isogen looks like it bottomed out just under 115 and is tracking up slightly. Again, I keep, I expect it to stay stable around 115. I don't expect it to rise up above, much above 115. I think that again, we're going to see miners slowly eat away that margin over the next couple of weeks as the market slows down volume wise in the interim with uh, all of the biggest Q4 releases coming out that aren't EVE. So uh, keep an eye on this as it slides down. We may get all the way down to 110, but that would be very optimistic to hope that it goes down to 110. Uh, next on the platter is Noxium, which is staying relatively stable right above 480. And again, I expected this to keep tracking down, but the market's going the opposite way. Uh, same thing I've been saying on all the other minerals. I expect it to track down. Uh, but the strange one this week has been Zydrine. Now, um, I have been saying for over a month that I expected Zydrine to hit 1,000, and just as it almost got there, looks like we're seeing a price reset. And I don't think that this over 1,100 price is stable, but if you manage to buy in at um, 1,010-ish, where it bottomed out, uh, now would be an excellent time to sell. I don't think this is real. Again, I still expect NullSec miners to mine out, uh, nullify their own wages. Um, but that's just, that's just me, the pessimist. Uh, if we look actually at the other markets altogether, we see that this, uh, this particular spike was preceded by similar spike, similar buyouts in Dodixi and Renz and Amar. Um, and Jita was actually the last one to move, which is very strange. We usually see Jita lead the curve in these, uh, in these instances. Again, this might be, this might be looking for signal among the noise, uh, more than an actually true signal. But I found it interesting that we saw such a sharp buyout, uh, across the board and, and Jita's the last one to the party. Moving on to Megasite. Megasite is pretty quiet. Uh, again, I expect it to be at 1300. It's nearly at 14 at the moment. Um, nothing much to say here. And again, just to get another zoom in on the high end, uh, we're, we're still seeing some pretty handsome margin in Dodixie and Renz, but uh, things are staying stable uh, in Jita and Amar. And Morphite uh, looks like it dipped down a a below 11K, but bounced right back. Um, 11K looks like a decent floor. I still think that by the end of the year, we'll be closer to 10K, but that's more of a pessimism around Tech 2. Now, um, actually, I, I take that back. I expect Morphite to stay stable around 11K and maybe slowly track up over the next couple of months, um, especially with the resurgence of T3 metas uh like the zealot is extremely popular at the moment and we'll talk about that in just a minute morphite may this may look like the bottom of morphite so if you can get a buy order around 11k i would do it but uh it's going to be a long slow wait to get that up to uh a decent mar a decent return so have some patience with morphite and last we'll look at the buy and sell margins again that huge margin on zydrine is uh is troublesome um, this is why I think that this is artificial and we're going to come crashing back down. Uh, Pyrite has a similar widespread that, uh, is troubling and everything else looks relatively stable with, uh, with the lines we had originally predicted. So, uh, let's move on to fuel markets. 
Again, fuel markets are pretty quiet, the same they've been uh, recently. Caldari fuel is tracking up slightly over the week, still valued north of 850. Uh, sorry, valued at 850 right now. Um, all the other fuels are bouncing around the 700 mark. Uh, not a lot to say here. I did say last week that we saw a lot of movement in the Galente uh, fuels, and we may be seeing a movement from Caldari reaction towers with the ability to run two reactions uh, being replaced with single reaction Galente towers for the time and fuel savings. Um, fuel blocks are trending rather stably. Uh, again, we're seeing all of the all of the other races peak up, and this looks to be led by a spike in robotics that uh, was only for a couple of days. So I expect this to come back down. And uh, so all of this high behavior I expect to come down in the next couple of days. It might be a decent chance to stock up uh, sometime in the next week. Moving on to outliers, we'll start with advanced materials. Things have been uh, same as they were last week. Um, interesting factors are fermionic condensates were high last week, and that party looks to be over, um, crashing down below 51K. And the other ones that were interesting, plasmonic metamaterials have a pretty wide buy spread, and uh, phenolic composites saw a bump, but that looks to have been wiped out. So what we're seeing is a lot of weakness in the low ends, uh, some instability in the middle, and a lot of instability on the top, uh, moving wildly up and down. So uh, it's not a good time to be a moon reactor at the moment. If you look at ferrogel, it's down pretty significantly from where it was last week at 24K. Uh, again, there might be a rebound, but I have a hard time really swallowing that prediction. Um, and then looking down in the moon markets, chromium took a big tumble, falling from 4,800 to 4,000 a unit. Uh, this would be a great chance to stock up if you need it, but it's not a particularly rare product. Uh, whereas platinum is extremely cheap as of this as of this show, uh, dipping below 2400 if you need it, especially if you're a nano uh, nanotransistor reactor, this would be a great chance to stock up on some. So uh, I would keep an eye out on this. Get some get some generous buy orders while you still can. Uh, and vanadium is another one that's uh, tracking down. If you're in the ph uh, phenolic composites market, this would be a great one to stock up on. Again, it's not a major, majorly expensive component, uh, but at sub 2200, this might be a good chance to refill your refill your stockpiles for the next couple of months. Moving on, we've been tracking P4s for the last couple of weeks, especially since the the Citadel requirements were announced. We saw a huge spike and a lot of volatility, uh, but it looks like we're settling in at a roughly plus 15% mark. Uh, again, if you are a, if you have access to do high end reactions, this would be a great chance to do some industry for a decent return. Uh, I really do love P, uh, P4s in, excuse me. I really love uh, enriching P2s into P4s. I think they are a, a great way to make some decent passive income, especially if you are within uh, a reasonable jump freighter trip to high sec. Uh, we're seeing some pretty huge spikes in the command centers. Uh, the planetary command centers have gone a little bit wild for barren and temperate uh, command centers. And if you're in the POCO game, this might be a good chance to go flip some temperate and barren barren planets around Jita, uh, I'd be looking at things like Black Rise and uh, the Citadel for chances to maybe claim some space for some extra bucks. Um, another one we've been tracking, though I might pull this one from future shows, is the salvage markets. Again, back to Citadel speculation. Uh, again, we continue to see strength in the tank module uh, markets like alloyed titanium bars and ward consoles, uh, where everything else is staying relatively stable. The fried interface circuits spiked up, but are settling back down, uh, into only a slightly higher price. Um, and the trip power circuits are actually falling. This might be a decent chance to buy in, but, uh, that would be a bit of a risky bet. I'm not sure why it's falling at the moment. And looking at T2, which I really should arrange in order with itself, um, we're seeing tracking up in the artificial neural networks, interface conduits, drone transceivers, 
ward consoles, I believe, are also the enhanced ward consoles are tracking up. So again, um, we're seeing a lot of strength in the tech in the tank module markets, uh, and these are going to be reflected in the tank modules for uh, for regular rigs until citadels come out. Um, I'm also finding it interesting that things like artificial neural networks and telemetry processors are so popular on the Tech 2 version when those are weapon, uh, those are used for weapon rigs, whereas when we look at the the non-tank modules in the salvage, in the T1 salvage, we're seeing almost no movement. So, um, interesting, interesting bet there. I don't know who knows more than the rest of us on that one, because, uh, I have a hard time believing you'd really want to put weapon rigs on a, on a Citadel, but what do I know? Uh, another interesting signal, and I probably should have just left the Rhea, uh, picture in instead of this one. Uh, Rhea's have been tracking up big time. They, they increased from about 7 billion to 7.5 billion. Uh, this looks like there may have been a decent buyout, uh, resetting the price. So, I, this one's a little hard to jump on because it takes so long to build jump freighters, but deviating from the normal 7 billion ish price where, when all the other, uh, products are so extremely stable is a very strange signal. So I expect this to come back down. Uh, if you're willing to play with a lot of money, I would be setting a buy order sub six, uh, 6.5 billion. Uh, but that's going to take a while. That's going to take a lot of patience and a lot of capital to, to really, uh, see, really see the, the fruits of that one. Uh, and then again, like I promised earlier, heavy assault cruisers are popular. Uh, if we look at the zealot, we saw a huge buyout sp spiking the price to 300 million temporarily. Um, there is a, it's a huge meta meta shift. Uh, especially if you're reading the reddits, um, a lot of nullsec coalitions are returning to heavy assault cruisers, which is excellent news if you are a tech two producer. Um, so for those who may not, may not know, um, the number one, pr number one consumer of moon products is going to be tech two cruisers. If we can get, uh, a tech two cruiser or two in a popular meta position, uh, it will drive a lot of product through the market. Um, we're seeing flatness across just about every other T2 ship market, but the resurgence of the resurgence of the zealot, uh, and the, the, uh, quiet expectation that the Cerberus is probably not far behind are two places that I would be watching extremely closely. If you want to be in the active speculation market through the end of the year, um, the zealot right now is a bit high, a bit popular. It's just now starting its, its rounds as a, uh, as a major fleet doctrine. Uh, also not pictured here. The Munin peaked up briefly, but I have a hard time getting behind a projectile, uh, an artillery platform like that. Uh, but the Cerberus is, is right now staying pretty steady right under 200 million and is extremely tempting for a long-term bet to watch for a, uh, a sudden spike as any coalition might pick that up as their next major ship. So, um, if you're a tech two producer, I would keep my eyes glued on the, on the heavy assault cruiser markets. I would also keep a close eye on the bomber markets to see if there is any new activity going out there, because there is a great opportunity to go churn a bunch of these out there and make a ton of money. Moving on to the Oracle. Um, we highlighted last week, the Talos, uh, was extremely popular. Um, and someone had mentioned on the, on the YouTube comments that, they are a popular Poco basher to which I was responding that I actually prefer to bash in oracles because there's no need to reload. And I don't know if you've been on a fleet that takes 15 minutes like that, but getting people to actually reload is a real pain in the ass. And, um, 
I'm finding it interesting that there is such a big sell-off in oracles at the moment. Again, I'm not an EFT warrior, but uh, it looks like we may be tracking slightly below the mineral prices. The, we're tracking down faster than the mineral prices would uh, let you believe. So I think this might be a decent chance to buy in, uh, looking at looking for an 80 million price to buy in and a 90, 95 million price to sell out at. Uh, again, I'm a huge fan of the Oracle Vertical Supremacy, of course, and I still think it's a valuable piece of the fleet meta, so uh, this is a great chance to stock up. Uh, another interesting darling is the Dramiel. Uh, all of a sudden went from about 40 million all the way up to 50-ish uh, million. Um, huge resurgence here. Uh, doesn't look like it's driven too much by volume. There may have been a shortage coming to market uh, and some strategic buying out, but I have a hard time believing the price is going to stay this high. If you are in Dramules, now is the time to sell. I would hold on, though, trying to buy in. Um, I think this is going to come crashing back down to sub 45 over the next week, but it's going to need, uh, it's going to take some uh, closer watching to make sure. Next, the Orca has been doing some interesting things. Uh, we saw it spike up suddenly uh, a couple weeks ago and then has been tracking down. Uh, right now, it looks to be slightly lower than the expected slide for minerals. Again, a decent chance to buy into Orcas if you need one. Uh, I wouldn't stockpile them because they take so much minerals and so many people are buying them that, uh, excuse me, so many people are building them that uh, there isn't a ton of money to be made. But if you need an Orca, if it is something that you've been holding on to, to go buy into, now is an excellent chance to go pick one up. Uh, next, the Kitsune has been interesting. There have been huge volume moves in the last few days uh, with what looks like decent sell-offs crashing the price sub 20 million and the price has been rebounding recently. So um, I think the action might be over on Kitsune's, but we might see some ripples as it moves forward. So I would keep maybe a speculative buy order at about 17 million uh, to try and sell at maybe 22 million. If you're trying to get into this market, uh, Kitsune's are a popular faction warfare uh, ship. They're great in when it comes to messing with people who, uh, Hey DCM because they're just like many blackbirds. Uh, terrible. So um, this one's been interesting. I would keep an eye on this. I might put some buy orders in on this uh, if you wanted to get speculative. But again, be careful. It looks like the volume on this is only about 80 a day. So uh, you might don't want to buy too many of them. Another interesting one, uh, usually because I don't like to highlight these because they're usually... You want to highlight the down spike, not the up spike. Uh, data core laser physics are tracking up pretty significantly uh, at the moment. Looks like about 140k at, uh, on those. So if you have a Mar loyalty points, this would be a great chance to cash out. Um, they're tracking up. Oh no, no, I know what this is. This isn't loyalty points. This is the zealot. Uh, with the zealot tracking up so high, uh, the data core is required to make the guns for the zealot. That's what it is are tracking up with it. So um, if you have Amar loyalty points, this is a great chance to get rid of them. If you have, uh, if you're trying to go get these, I'd be, uh, I never think that they account for very much in the uh, actual invention process, but uh, I'd be watching out for the price for the next few days. Uh, expect this to be uh, unstable through the weekend. So there might be a chance to get them sub 110K uh, as they, fly up and down. Uh, prices look to be pretty unstable, but the uh, if you can go sell them for 140k, you could be making a pretty decent uh, isk per hour off those uh, off those loyalty points. Um, another interesting one is the Parity dec Decryptor. Um, this one is popular for Tech 2 frigates because it allows you to produce uh, in reasonably large quantities at a pretty good uh, at a pretty good material efficiency. Again, if you want to know about decryptors, you should go check out the blog. There's a tutorial on decryptors, uh, everything you never wanted to know about them. And uh, the prices keep tracking up. Now, I almost want to say that this might be, this might be zealot driven, but 
I have a hard time believing that uh, somebody really wants to get the plus three runs on a Zealot BPC as opposed to a Bomber or a Interceptor. So um, prices are tracking up. If you have these and you're an explorer, now's a great chance to sell them. I know that uh, the decryptor market is a little bit weird for people. They don't really know where things go. Um, but Parity is one of my favorite decryptors. And then uh, nearing the end of our list, we have Fedos have been uh, tracking up. I'm not sure if this is because of CCP Quant's talk about exotic dancers and uh, they need their they need their best friends, their Fedos. But uh, looks like the prices are tracking up slightly. This also may have been uh, a change in the in the uh, tables with the Parallax release. So I just. Thought it, I, I like to take every chance to highlight livestock whenever it uh, whenever it flags because usually there's a funny story underneath it. And then on to our last section, the prediction review, where we look at the previous week's uh, performance. Uh, I highlighted last week the Anhirji carrier fighter uh, had tracked up very significantly. It looks like it's tracking right back down. Now, if you are an optimist, this might be a decent chance to buy in at about 20 million to try and catch it on the bounce. Um, it's a risky maneuver, but you could, you could be making a little bit of money off of that. Uh, also, if you are careful with your minerals, this might be a decent place to still build a few. Uh, next, the Gila is track, continuing to track down, and I said I didn't understand why last week, uh, but I was corrected that it's losing a low slot, so it looks like it's not as popular coming down. Um, it's hard to predict the floor on something like this, but I would try to, I would like to buy in at about 225 million if you wanted to be speculative. I still think the Gila is a powerful ship, especially given its bonuses and uh, its ability to be basically the the in that drone meta of the VNI and the Ishtar and the Brudix and all of those ships that all sit in the in the drone metas. Uh, I know that drones are not popular at the moment, but everything's a cycle, so. Uh, if you want to hold on to them for a season, so up to three months, I would be shooting for 225. If you want to hold on to them for longer, I'd be shooting for sub 200. Um, hard, again, to pick exactly the, the positions on this one. And then uh, the Gecko keeps tracking down. Um, we saw some instability after the after the Eve Vegas announcements, uh, but it looks like we're on a track to 80 million. Uh, again, I think this is still a buy if you need them and avoid buying unless you, uh, for speculation, because I don't think that, uh, they're going to, I don't think it's at a good price yet to speculate on, uh, sub 70 million is where I would put that mark, but, uh, to keep an eye on this for sure, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep pulling this graph week over week. And then last, just to visit it one more time. Um, I think the, this is going to be the last week we will look at these is the capital, the capital modules we highlighted in the, um, in the blog for the CSM investigation. Uh, things look to be returning to regu basically normal. We're seeing drone control units back at about parity with their build cost. Uh, we're seeing triage modules, uh, tracking back down again, sticking to mineral prices, uh, siege module, uh, excuse me, triage module twos, again, staying pretty, pretty lockstep with costs. Uh, siege module ones, again, staying extremely stable. And siege module twos, also staying stable. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be the last week we look at it. I'm going to keep pulling the report for a couple more weeks just because, uh, until the, until the dotted lines run out, I might as well pull it. That's the last we'll see of those until the capital changes actually get announced. So that ends our show. I want to thank everyone who tuned in live. Again, I'm your host, Lock Fox, and you've been watching the Eve Prosper Market Show. If you want to tune in and follow the show, all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and the blog. Uh, we're live every Friday at 0300. I know that's a new time, sort of, uh, thanks to the time change here in the States. Uh, we'll be live on Fridays. We may be missing a few shows, uh, going into the holiday season, but I will announce that on the Twitters. 
And last, if you get value from this show and you want to support us, the very best way to do that is at our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Eve Prosper. Uh, those contributors help keep the lights on and keep the show running. So uh, I want to thank everyone there. We have seen an uptick recently, and I really do appreciate everyone who uh, contributes. So uh, if you get value from the show, please consider contributing. Uh, if you can't contribute, spam the crap out of your friends and get them to tune into the show. Uh, it really, I really do enjoy producing it for you guys. And also be sure to check out the market maker interview with Delone Wolf that came out this week. Uh, it's on YouTube and on the blog in podcast form. So again, I'm your host, Lock Fox, and I'll see you all next week on the next Eve Prosper Market Show.